This Week in IT. Surface Plus Copilot PCs go all in with Intel. Microsoft announces that it's bringing support for DeepSeek to Windows. And the Windows Server Update Services DriverSync service is being retired. So stay tuned for all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Windows and Azure. Before we get started, I've got a quick favour to ask you. The channel is getting really popular now and I'm starting to be recognised on the streets. So I'd really appreciate it if you don't subscribe to the channel and definitely don't like this video. It's been another interesting week in the world of AI models with all the fuss about DeepSeek over the weekend. I'm sure you're aware of what was going on with that. So this is a new open source AI model that's come out of China and is rivaling things coming from OpenAI. Uh, this is open source. Uh, you can run it locally. They've developed it at a very low cost. I think about $6 million compared to something like $80 million that OpenAI was using to develop one of its models and it outperforms OpenAI at least in certain tasks. So it caused a bit of an upset over the weekend. Now yesterday Microsoft announced that it was bringing support for DeepSeek R1 and a particular version of that AI model to Windows 11 Copilot Plus PCs. Now Copilot Plus PCs as you probably know are a quick with neural processing units and they're able to run what are called small language models locally on the processor so you don't have to send any data to the cloud and all the processing happens locally. Now Copilot Plus PCs already have something like uh, around 40 different types of model on them that are able to use the MPU including Microsoft's own small language model which is called Phi Silica and this is derived from a whole different set of language models that they have running in the cloud in Azure. Now this announcement says that there's a very specific model so it's DeepSeek R1 Distill Quen 1.5B model so that's a bit of a tongue twister if ever there was one. This model they're bringing to Copilot Plus PCs, initially those running on Snapdragon X devices, and it will be coming later to Intel Lunar Lake CPUs and AMD Ryzen AI 9 processors. And they're saying that it's going to be MPU optimized, an MPU optimized version of this model. So what are these models being used for is the question. This is not the first model on these devices, but this model is now coming as something additionally that developers can use and build into their applications. And the answer to that is, well, I'm not exactly sure. I don't have one of these devices. I've never used one. But the idea is that certain applications can use the MPU. I know, for instance, things like DaVinci Resolve have various features built into it that can optimize processing using this MPU. I don't know, things like doing certain kinds of video rendering for special effects and all sorts of clever things going on there. But I'm not sure apart from very specific niche uses like that, exactly how useful these small language models are on the local device itself. Maybe in terms of just searching and running general queries they're used. Actually, I have no idea whether that's the case or not. I think we're also used now to using things like Copilot or ChatGPT, which are obviously models that run in the cloud. They're large language models. And you know, most of us, at least as consumers or small businesses, have everything stored in the cloud. So I'm kind of scratching my head a little bit. Well, I understand the point of these small language models. I understand the point of them being open source and running locally. But what are the actual uses today. And I think that's one of the things that Microsoft is really struggling with for Copilot. So I think outside of those creative niche uses, I'm not exactly sure. Where I can see these things being useful is in business, where there are organizations, of course, that don't want to put any of their data into the cloud or some of the data has to stay 
local in a local data center, then I can see these local small language models being quite useful because of course you can process that data using these models without it ever having to leave your own data center. So there I could see it being really useful. But for the consumer, the average user, mm, not really sure. For creative professionals, yep, I can see some real uses, some other niche uses, of course, you know, I don't know, for building, I don't know, mathematical models or doing data analysis. Maybe it's more efficient than using a large language model in the cloud. But I think the proof is in the pudding. Until we see some really great examples of why we should be doing this locally with one of these particular models, I'm not sure that it's a huge selling point for one of these devices, either for business at this stage or for consumers. Of course, it's interesting that Microsoft is bringing DeepSeek. Now, OpenAI, their models are really optimized, they're large language models, and they're optimized to run in the cloud. They don't do so much in the small language model space, but DeepSeek, of course, is something different. And with all of this stuff going on, we talked about it in last week's video, a little bit of a wrangling happening there between Microsoft and OpenAI at the end of last year. It's interesting that they're turning to DeepSeek to bring some of this stuff to their Copilot Plus PCs. Staying on the subject of Copilot Plus PCs, Microsoft announced this week that there are two new devices from the Surface line being released in the middle of February, the Surface Laptop 7 for business and the Surface Pro 11. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the Surface Laptop 7, don't know much about the Surface Pro devices to be honest. I want to talk about the Surface Laptops. So what is this all about? So this is a, a device for business. And we had back, I think it was in September, the Surface Laptop 7, the consumer edition. Now this edition of the device runs on a Snapdragon X processor, so it's an ARM-based device. It's also a Copilot Plus PC, so it meets certain standards in terms of battery life, the, uh, the amount of MPU processing that it's able to do in order to get that badge of being a Copilot Plus PC. So what is different about this? Well, there's always been, well, I don't know about always, but in recent years at least, we've had these two different versions of the Surface laptop. So the laptop for consumers and the laptop for business. So what we're getting now is basically the same device, same processor as an Intel Ultra Core, Series 2 processor, the same specs in terms of MPU and graphics, and I think screen as well, but with a few extra bits and pieces and a few things that differentiate it from the consumer version. So these business versions of the Surface Laptop, they come with Microsoft's Pluton security chip. And this is designed to enhance security by integrating directly into the CPU to protect sensitive data like user identities, passwords, and encryption keys from potential attack. And of course, this device includes a Windows Hello for Business. Microsoft also said this week that they're developing their own key storage provider to further improve Pluton's capabilities. So enhancing the storage and management of cryptographic keys on on these devices and that will be coming to not just Intel CPUs but also to Snapdragon and to AMD Copilot Plus devices. Microsoft also said while we're on the subject of artificial intelligence a lot these days that Security Copilot is going to be enabled for the management story of these devices. So of course there's a special management suite I think within Intune that gives a whole set of special capabilities for specifically managing Surface hardware and Microsoft says it's going to enable Security Copilot to make it easier for organizations to, I suppose, analyze a lot of the data that comes out of these devices and find problems faster and to resolve issues before they become a problem. Now, in terms of how these compare to the Snapdragon X devices, I haven't seen benchmarks specifically, but Microsoft is saying that they should provide up to 22 hours of video playback and 14 hours of web browsing. So it's been really hard to get a lot of information on these Copilot Plus PCs. I, I try to find information about how well DaVinci Resolve runs on a Snapdragon 
X processor on one of these devices. And there seemed to be very, very little real world information of people actually having these devices and running things like DaVinci Resolve on them. At least nobody that I would consider trustworthy uh, to provide me with that information. So it's really interesting that they didn't seem to be taken off in the way that Microsoft had hoped. Of course, we had all of that debacle last year with the kind of big selling feature as far as Microsoft was concerned, which was Windows Recall, which is now, I think, back in preview, but only on the Windows Insider channel. So until we see, you know, some real killer feature for these devices, uh, as I said before, uh, you know, kind of the same thing with these small language models and all the rest of it, what is the use for me? What benefit does it have for me? not quite sure at this stage and I think the market is also not quite sure either. You probably remember a few months back Microsoft announced that it would be deprecating the Windows Server update services feature in Windows Server. So this is the on-premises feature that essentially allows you to control how updates are rolled out to PCs on your local network. Now, of course, Microsoft wants you to move over to its mobile device management system in tune. They're not really interested in maintaining all of this on-premises stuff when they can get a regular payment out of you for their cloud services. And, you know, I don't think that this announcement is going to affect a huge amount of people. I'm sure that organizations are already looking at alternatives for Windows Server update services, uh, whether it's something third party or whether they're going to look to move towards, you know, a mobile device management system, Intune or some other third party vendor. Microsoft has said this week that they're basically getting rid of the uh, driver synchronization service that's part of Windows Server update services. And they're saying, well, if you want drivers to sync now, you're going to have to manually download them from the Microsoft update catalog. So Microsoft is saying that this service is going to be deprecated on April the 18th. So I guess that means it will just stop working. Although they're saying you can you know, manually download these things from the Microsoft Update catalog, you won't be able to just import them into Windows Server Update services. You'll have to use a device driver package or use a third party alternative. So you do need to plan for this if this is a service that you're currently relying on. It's also worth noting that this is just a reminder from Microsoft. This is something that was already announced back in June last year. So if this is taken you by surprise now, well, you need to watch this week in IT more often. So to make sure that you don't miss out on these kinds of important announcements. I'd love to know what you think about these Copilot Plus PCs, all this stuff with the small language models. What are the benefits? Have you got one? Have you used one? Do you feel that there's any reason that people should be buying these things right now, whether it's for consumers or for businesses? I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribed, of course. We can never be too famous here. I was just joking at the beginning of the video. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen right now where I look into the Stargate uh, project that was announced by the US government last week and some issues with Windows Server 2022 not booting. So do check that out. But that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time.